Welcome to Can Do's Season 3 of Unbreakable Entrepreneurs. We search nationwide to find the best entrepreneurs that best represent the unbreakable nature of cans. Our panel of judges for today are Can Do's brand manager, Snem Kize. My name is Snem Kize and I am the marketing manager for Can Do, which is the consumer facing brand for Nampak Bev Can. I am passionate about entrepreneurs because I think they are the backbone of South Africa. Can Do as a brand um, decided to create this opportunity for young people because we do believe that young people have so much to offer the country. PR giant and the founder of African Star Communications, Farah Fortune. Um, I'm Farah Fortune and I'm the director of African Star Communications. I'm passionate about entrepreneurs because I've spent most of my life being an entrepreneur. I know how hard it is and I know what a struggle it is, but I also know how quick people give up. Um, and I think if people have examples of not giving up, they're more likely to pursue their dreams. MASH startup founder, Mashuru Madal. My name is Mashuru Madal. Um, I am the founder and uh, podcaster for Lucha Africa. I'm passionate about entrepreneurs mainly because the generation of African millennials that are coming up right now are the ones who feel that they can solve their own problems. We can take on the, the challenges that we have and doing that through entrepreneurship, through building businesses, through building startups is the most incredible way we can do it, right? And yeah, all I see is incredible entrepreneurs coming up to build the solutions that we actually need to take on the challenges that we have and really build a sustainable future where Africa's youth and Africa's young people aren't waiting for someone else to come in and solve those problems. Hip-hop veteran and the founder of Slicker on Life, Mr. Slicker. My name is Yabonga Medani. Uh, my designation is Slicker. I mean, a guy, I work for that company ever since I said I'm going to call myself that guy. That's really my job. I'm serious. I think it's important because the more we show that, like, um, whether, the, the, whether there's, a, whether there's um, 12 kids and there's one winner, the point is that we got to show that, like, people have got ideas. we got to show that people are, are, are in their communities, are inspired by everything happening in their communities. And, and that inspires them to fix things, do things better, see things further, and they inspire me. Hi, my name is Chad Karambi. I come from Cape Town. My business is called New Earth Projects. New Earth Projects is a free recycling collection service based in Cape Town, Ward 60. What's happening? What's happening? Uh, good day, judges. My name is Chad Kadambi. I'm co-founder of New Earth Projects, a free recycling collection service based in Cape Town, Ward 60. Due to the lack of recycling collection services and informal waste pickers not being allowed into secure communities, New Earth Projects created a zero waste collection service where we provide participants with two bags weekly for separation and sorting of materials. We work alongside with community groups, neighborhood watches, and the municipal office of the ward to create the first zero waste ward in Cape Town. New, New Earth Projects intends on creating 3D printed technologies from the waste from our zero waste community initiative. That's amazing. So all the waste collected would go into the processing and recycling so that it can be turned into recycled 3D printed filament that will be used to create educational toys for early childhood development centers in impoverished communities. Thank you. Okay, that's impressive. But how do you make money? Well, we are a free collection service in a specific ward in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Outside of that ward, we do charge for collections of recyclables. Okay. Uh, why does this matter to you? Uh, myself and my partner, we were in different industries, decided to do something better for our communities and there's a lot of opportunity in recycling. Led us to create a great business where we have employees and a great team where we are all uh, passionate about changing or bettering the environment for all life and all people. Have you made a difference to your community in terms of what it looks like? Uh, at the moment, we 
in Ward 60, there are about 8,000 units and we currently serve about 800. So that is about 10% of the whole ward oh. to create a zero waste community. Nice. So let me ask a question. So you create these toys, right? Uh, th those are just prototypes at the moment. Oh. Just uh, of what they can when they print, 3D print. 3D printing. Oh, so, so, because so, I never heard you properly because you weren't too clear. The, are you saying that like you take the waste and you create, the, mm -hmm. this is what you would create? That's this is correct. a prototype? Yes. So you haven't created this yet? No, uh, if all goes well in the competition, it would help my business take it to the next step of processing plastic waste to create a 3D a recycled filament. When you say 800, if you say you're not making these, what do you, what's the what do you, what the 800 houses doing? Am, am I understanding the 800 in this yes. community of 8,000? You said you got what what's happening in this 800 houses? Well, we provide the bags. It's a curb a curbside collection, and the community all in board, and it's to get to create the first zero waste community. Okay. So 10 percent of the of the community is involved in recycling currently. Okay, 10%. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. Yes. Sorry, we have to wrap up, but thank you yeah. very much. I'm going to give this back thank to you. you. Thank, thank you, thank judges. You. It's very impressive. Thank you. And well done on your community project. You. Sounds dope. Then mm -hmm. after that, you got to get a contract from by Toys R Us. Now you're in business. We we will produce our own, yes, manufacture oh, okay. our own toys. Mm -hmm. Thank, yes, thank you, you very much, Chad. We appreciate it. Hi, my name is Nsako Mklanga. I am from Edenvale in Johannesburg. I run an online radio station about education um, and we provide education content, projects and initiatives um, that are aimed at uh, empowering young people with skills and knowledge for a changing world. Good morning. Yes, um, I just wanted to hand this first before I begin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's part of your minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, my name is Ntlaku Mklang. I'm the founder of uh, CAPS Radio. It's an online radio station about education. Um, and we are the drivers of digital education in South Africa, which is where education is going, but we are infiltrating the media space. So we specialize in uh, education content, projects, and initiatives that are aimed at empowering young people for, uh, with knowledge and skills for a changing world. And I think it's very important that we get our young people geared for the different industrial revolutions that are soon to come. So what makes us unbreakable is our mandate the fact that we want quality education in our lifetime. And um, we've done a lot of work. I mean, we visited a lot of schools. We've done a lot of investigative journalism to solve some of the problems that are happening in schools. Um, we've engaged a lot of stakeholders uh, to you know, promote their involvement in education. And I think that's one of the things that we really um, you know, make a noise about, the fact that education is, in fact, a collaborative effort. And we all need to get our hands on deck to make it happen. And I think the only way we can uh, make sure that you know, everyone and we, we achieve quality education um, is, is in fact that we, um, you know, just get <laughs> work together and, and make sure that uh, our learners get quality education in their lifetime. Okay. Yeah. What's your biggest challenge so far? Data. Um, it's quite expensive to access something like that, uh, considering the fact that our learners can't access um, internet and all of that because of the data prices. It's quite expensive. Um, but even with that, like I said, it's a collaborative effort. So now we're speaking to ICASA to now bring down the rates for educational resources that they need, um, because ultimately we need them to access the information that we have so that they can pass. Uh, do you know about zero rate? Yes, I do. Um, we are in talks with that as well. And we're just trying to explore the different avenues um, to make sure that the learners can access it. I mean, we've contacted different um, mobile networks um, to possibly even get just, if we can get the learners on that mobile network, then you know, it can be zero rated. Okay. Um, we've been in talks with different people, but we're exploring those, those kind of strategies. Yeah. How big is your team and how are you sustaining yourselves? So recently, um, we got, uh, C we are CETA accredited because how I get my team is I get, I recruit students who are studying journalism and then they work with us and then CETA oh, compensates okay. them. Um, do you, is it only audio? No. Um, so it's, 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 we're exploring that as well. Um, we have a magazine platform and we're going on TV quite soon in November. Um, but it's, it's Caps Media, but Caps Radio itself is, is the, the baby of Caps Media. What education. makes your business different um, from other talk shows that empower people? Mm. What would you say is your biggest uniqueness? I think it's the fact that we, we don't use young people on 
the first level. Um, you know, sometimes a lot of initiatives, they say, oh, they're for young people, but young people weren't part of the planning or the implementation. They're sort of just the faces of it. Um, this is literally made by young people, by the learners themselves, by people who just got out of the schooling system, um, simply because we need direct involvement of them to know what the learners in class are going through. So I think the uniqueness of it is the fact that it's the youth involvement in it, and it's the confidence of the youth that are involved, and it's the involvement and how involved they are. I mean, they are the drivers of this thing. So, yeah. cool. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, that's amazing. My name is Fezi Lembleche. I'm from KwaZulu Natal, Durban. I am the founder, so I own a fashion school called the Fezi Le Fashion Skills Academy, which is the first fashion school to be based in a township. Good morning, judges. My name is Fezi Lembleche. I am from Durban, KwaZulu Natal. I am the founder of Fezile Fashion Skills Academy, which is the first accredited fashion skills academy or fashion school based in a township in this regard, Wamashu. What makes my concept unique is that um, it is making fashion education inclusive by bringing it to the heart of every child in a township through learnerships and bursaries. Um, what makes me unbreakable along the, alongside the business is I'm currently a PhD candidate at DUT under the DUT Doctoral Ministry Program, specializing in education, fashion, and social sciences. And the agenda for my PhD is that I would like to develop a curriculum, um, a decolonized curriculum that I will implement at the academy next year under the subsidized National Diploma in Fashion. What What does, I mean, so fashion, just generally, fashion business, clothing business, retail business, it's an expensive business. It's not, I'm not even talking about a brand. Even if you're selling the cheapest shirt just to distribute it, get it on retail, it's all expensive. What is success in this type of business and where, where is the money in this type of business? Such a nice question. Um, yes. Okay. So, so um, yes, yeah, fashion is an expensive business. So um, the academy, it's a social project, but the money within the concept really will come from the agency because the idea is that I keep the students in the academy for five years. So the first year they do a Gen Ed module, which is all the the modules. The second year they specialize. Then the third year they go into business training um, and incubation within the agency because it's two in one. And then um, then they go into business. We register them as business and they start operating as businesses within the academy and the agency space. And then in the fifth year, um, the agency, which is myself as well, will then fund at least thirty percent of the business content for them to sort of go out in the world and then they will spend their five years. I want to understand your your pricing strategy because obviously in our country we have things such as fees must fall. Mm -hmm. So you are going into that space where you're offering education um, to people who are interested in fashion um, within the township. So I assume that your pricing is lower to be able to be inclusive to those people. I want to understand what is your pricing and how will you make money in the future if you do keep it at a level where if you are considering yourself as a lower premium provider, education provider? Okay. Um, for the school, to be honest, there is no pricing. The learnerships are free mm -hmm. from level one and two. I know it sounds crazy. The National Diploma in Fashion from CHE from next year is free. So my role as the owner of the school with my team is to apply for funding which we have. There's a lot of funding as, learners, as far as learners are concerned. There's also a hell of a lot of funding through DHEAD as far as learners are concerned. It's nice to know that we're actually getting some yeah, free so education out yeah, of this. It's free. Things are Thank you very yeah. much, Fizile. Thank, Thank you. My name is Musa Maluleka. I'm from the township of Atrishville. Um, my business is the first proudly South African soccer boot brand. Piski. So I've combined the slang with Piski, which is what soccer is called in the townships, and the African suffix ki, 
So you spell it like this. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Musama Luleka. My name is Umi. I'm the founder of Disky. I'm proudly South African soccer boot brand. Now I came up with this concept of making a soccer boot when I realized that there was no single African soccer boot brand, which effectively meant there was no soccer boot that is specifically designed to play on our African local soccer pitches, those dusty pitches. So I was like, how do I solve this problem while well, supposedly enabling myself to solve other social issues like unemployment? I'm unbreakable because of, I spent about three years developing this idea, doing research and development. They told me it was impossible. They told me I was too young, but I lived by one month. Once you find your calling, it doesn't matter how young you are, you'll come out the challenges and beat them while things the sweet as ever. <laughs> I like that. Go. Go. Yeah. Questions? Can you please um, just take me through uh, the process? So, how do you, do you manufacture these yourself? Just take me through the process. So, there's no soccer food factory here in, in Africa. I was like, how do I position this? That's not bad. In a business sense. I like so, I realized there wasn't good for me to be an expert. Mm -hmm. And the other be a friend. And then partner with the factory. So, are these from China? So, do you order from China, then you brand the, the soccer so, boots? How so, does it work? So, I've partnered with a factory in China. Okay. So, we do the design and then they design the whole thing for me and then I ship it. Okay. So my business model includes importing and exporting. Have you already started selling? Yeah, I've already started selling. And how's the response been? Yeah, it's been quite well. I went to UNC last month. What's your price difference? Give me an idea of in terms of if I'm buying a, another brand or something that's a little bit more well known. The other brands, it's like 1,200 $1, okay. to 1,300. And this one is 900, oh. and it's the entry level. Okay. With regards to your distribution plan, what is, who, I mean, they, they, you've been asked if you've sold any. Yeah. Who have you sold to? What's the plan to distribute and get it out there? When I mean, you see, what store should this be in? So, I want to make it, I want to position them as, a, as an exclusive, as, as an exclusive brand. So, I don't want to go into the retail stores. So, I want to grow it, and then which, Distribute with an online store. Then as soon as it grows, which is a sports brand, and then build my own store. Can I can I just tell you something? Your audience and your market, because um, just to keep it one hundred with you, white people are playing in green fields. Yeah. The masses are playing in the dust. Your audience needs this to be mass. Yeah. So if this was a luxury brand for the high market cool, but you're creating something for the mass market and you want to have an online store also. And your online store, how many people are on, are on the internet? So maybe you need to also rethink your strategy and your distribution strategy, because um, this is not an exclusive product. This is a mass product. So, so, so because it's soccer boots, there's an entry-level soccer boot, and then there's the premium one. So I want to build the premium one and then help you in exclusive stores. So okay. with the Entry level, I'm still looking at the strategy of where I'm thinking to retain, so I'm not quite as sure as yet, but I'm still doing the research behind it. Great product, and always think who you're doing it for. Yeah. And that's how you position yourself in the market. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Nice. It's great ideas. This guy's got great ideas. Right? I know. Mm. Very, very he's articulate 19. in his ideas. Yeah, he's 19. Mm. He's 19. Yeah. Oh my God, he's 19. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I'm um, Leon Kwabe. I'm from Cape Town. So what sets us apart from our competition is that our whole business model is catered around the township. So from our delivery personnel to our marketing, everything is just purely gassy. Hi. Hi, uh, I'm Leon Kwabe, I'm from Cape Town. I'm a founder of Odekasi. So just to jump into it, uh, Odekasi is like Uber Eats is the delivery. The difference is that we strictly provide township food. So um, you can order like from Shisanyama, Gatsby, or you call that from your home and we bring it to you. So the other difference that we do is that the whole model is based around township people. Okay. So from local people, we provide them with school tips so they raise it to own. The youth, we get them involved in doing deliveries using bicycles. And the mothers and the women, the, they promote promotional codes and the revenue that generates, they get a share of it. So our future plan is to diversify uh, from food going to groceries um, and other items. Um, also to collect the data that we make on the platform and it creates more opportunities in the township. 
Uh, for the funding, we're looking at um, improving our platform, uh, daily operations, and most importantly, marketing, because we want to get that word out there. Um, we believe our unbreakable is because this is an existing um, business concept that we are applying into an overlooked market. And we see ourselves as the face of Ikasi, and you can't break a Ikasi hustle. Thank you. I have two questions for you. One, what was your biggest challenge in terms of getting the word out there or actually getting people to order? And what has been the response from this? At the moment, our pilot is starting the 7th of June. Okay. okay. Um, I would say our biggest challenge um, is actually the marketing in the sense that we need to get the word out there for the venues to trust the brand because we only use card payments for security because we are we mm -hmm. the assumption. So just to get the brand out, brand awareness out there that there's such a service that is trustworthy. Okay. So, uh, so far though, uh, we started in Cali Church, Cape Town. Okay. And the feedback has been positive. All right. Okay. Chris, how many users, how many downloads have you had? Uh, so the pilot only starts on the 7th of June. So this is not a functioning business as yet. You are about to launch. Yes, yes, yes. So the app, the app is there, the scooters are there, the drivers are there. We're starting to do the pilots to, um, because we're launching only one township to test the pilots. Then from there we go nationally because we want to be in every township in South Africa. Nice. Um, from the Uber Eats perspective, they, they mark up the food and mark up the delivery, which makes up for all the cost, right? Mm. And also they have a massive volume. So with the food, like township food, there's like very low margins. So how are you guys playing there? So, in regards to that, the low margins is because of the limited market. So, we're opening up that you in the suburb can now order from the township. So, the same oh. person who would be using Uber Eats will be like, hey, I want to share So, then that's how we, 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 we open up the market so the, the volumes will increase. Oh, so you're not just, just catering to the, no, the gas. So, oh. we're taking the township restaurants and open up the markets to suburbs. Do you have a quick question? Um, I, I, well, here's my other thing. If like building the app, development is expensive, maintaining is expensive, having the logistics, who's the delivery, the cars, trusting people that are going to actually drive, because you know those guys with motorbikes, they can drive and eat the food, you know, <laughs> one bite and then they give it to you. There's a lot of logistics and a lot of people. I think you could flip your idea around and actually like sign up all the Gassi restaurants and go to Uber and say, Uber Eats and say, you're the middleman for the hood and sign a deal there and you get something there. Uh, this is a valid point. Um, in regards to that, our future plan is to actually be in partnership with the township delivery companies. So we'll approach them, like as you're saying, and we'll say, listen, we're going to open up uh, to your bigger market now. See, so. But to do that though, to come to the table, we need to have our data. So we have to run it ourselves first. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. My name is Ndamum Mabidi, and I am from Johannesburg, South Africa. I have a company called NIM Editorial, which provides writing and language editing services for academic, personal, and business use. We offer services in all South African languages, as well as work with clients in various African countries of all sizes and types, as you can imagine. Good afternoon. My name is Ndamu, and I am the founder and chief editor of NIM Editorial. We provide language and personal writing services for academic, personal, and business use. We also operate within Africa for audiences of all sizes and types. Within South Africa, we provide services in only official 11 languages. What makes me or my business unbreakable is the fact that we are a highly experienced team of editors. For example, we are all educated to master's and PhD level. And just to mention my professional experiences specifically in banking, broadcasting, media, entertainment, human resources, to name a few. And so that surely should show you some sort of experience that we have and knowledge that we have within our particular field. Thank you. What are your main services? So are you translating? Are you writing? Are you checking grammar? What is your main Sure, so firstly we write, we edit, we proofread, we translate, we offer transcription services as well. Okay. And who are your main types of students? Is it So it's academic, personal and business use. So within academic would be students or professors within that kind of industry. Personal use would be if you were looking for assistance with writing a business plan or writing an article, then 
a magazine or social media posts. And for business use, it would be companies that want to advertise themselves. So we'd put together a brief for them. If I wanted to write a book, right, about business. About, sorry? About business. Sure. Right. So would you guys, like, help me? Like as ghostwriters, what does it look like and what does it cost? So if you specifically want assistance with writing a book, the first thing I do is say, let's meet together. Let's understand what exactly it is that you want. We'd put together some ideas based on what you're looking for. And then if you're happy with what we've suggested or recommended, then we proceed. How much does it cost? For different services, I'd quote you a different price, but for safe, specifically for academic services, we would charge 29 rands per page. So that would be for each article or thesis or a conference proceeding that you're presenting. For a book, we'd need to decide what kind of book is it, how long is the book, what kind of content are we looking at, and the grammar as well. So, so you can do people's homework too? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't do homework. So we won't write your research for you, we'll only edit it or proofread it, that's all. My question now, what are you, or the challenges of technology where you've got autocorrect, what makes you think that yours, and you got Google, which can give you a template, you know, um, what, what, what makes you feel like you guys have got the, can be sustainable with, 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 with like this type of service being available online? Sure. So I found that in most cases when people write, as much as they'll use autocorrect or any other service that's available, it's how you present your information. So as much as it could be factually correct, but how you write it, you might get some correction of which versus is or are, but it doesn't mean your sentence makes sense. So we would then come in and then help you structure that sentence properly. Okay. You're a clever black, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. My name is Tumisang. My house name is Maramani and I'm from Tembisa. My business name is Khorasang Spaces. It's been operating for a year and a half. Uh, it's level one BE certified, and it's in the green building industry. Hi everyone. My name is Tumisa Maramani, the founder of Khorasang Spaces. Khorasang is an innovative company that merges technology with construction by using expanded polystyrene panels, as you can see. We're in the construction industry and specialize in affordable, easy to build structures that are environmental friendly, recyclable, thermal control, and reduce carbon footprint. With this new innovation, we remain at the forefront of new developments. Our keen knowledge of the construction industry has helped us develop sustainable products that answers the needs of today's clients. What makes our business unbreakable is that we came up with innovation solutions that solves current construction needs. Okay. Thank you. Can I see that actually? Any? Yes. So is it the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. So this, this is how you would build a house. This is the material. This is concrete based. This is polystyrene panels. Can I see the polystyrene? I don't know if we're going to be able to leave them, but it's heavy. Okay, because like, touch it? This is, an, this, is a, this is a complete wall. When it's like this, is a complete wall. Okay. What so do hold you, on, you, what, you, what do you build with this? this? Can I have a Anything, house. Okay. It's heavy. It's right. fine. I'm a, I know I'm a girl, <laughs> but it's all right. How much? What's the price on this compared feel this. to, compared to like, normal bullying? Mm. The pricing compared to this is that this is actually <laughs> is 30 percent cheaper than the 30 percent cheaper than your normal. In two days. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Um, let me ask a question. Um, how are you? So is, is the business the building or is the business the product? Or the is business it? is the constructing of the. Is okay. The so do you no, no. sell what, what this? I'm saying, do you sell the service of oh. building the house? Or the, are you creating this? No, I'm building the house. Okay. So, where, so the innovation of this, where, where is that coming from? It's coming from the, the polystyrene that we use. Okay, so, so this is so, from your so manufacturer. Is, so did you create this, what I'm telling Yes, this is what, this is what oh. was one of our, our the project we had in Pretoria. Projects. Okay, so now are you selling this to people like, who are you speaking to to sell it to? Like a builder's warehouse? Did, no, you, I'm not selling it to the builder's warehouse. I'm selling it to the landowners. For instance, let's say you want to build a house. Then I suggest to you say like, instead of you using your bricks and mortar, I have a better solution that can last you for a long time because like the durability of this compared to your... Okay, let me, I, I know exactly what he's asking. So let me, let me rephrase it. Maybe he's not asking him okay. properly. He's asking you, are you, you manufacture this? No. no. For okay. now we don't have the You don't manufacture. Okay. But are you taking this and are you selling this to 
distributors for them to distribute? No. Or is that from the manufacturer? So you are only selling the concept of the house and building with these materials? Yes. Okay. So, you get it. so who, who, whose idea is this brick? It comes from Europe. So I thought that the innovation was the brick, but, and that was, would have been real special. <laughs> <laughs>